All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash, which is to say the only true name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone that rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom. To all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and never to waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. To the believers and the few sisters that watch, I say shalom to you as well. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And uh, Lord willing, this is uh, edifying. Okay. Um, so as you can see here on the screen, it says stores are closing in 2024. Okay, and it's it's alarming. Okay, but um, for those of us who um, you know that thirst for a kingdom of righteousness, that uh, you know hasten the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know those that of us that hate our lives, you know uh, uh, those that of us that know that we're captive exiles and we hasten to be let loose. Well, all of this is good news. This is great news to us. Okay, why? Because. <clears throat> As as secular history goes, you know, and, and more importantly, as biblical history goes, okay, kingdoms rise and fall. You see, now we are witnessing the fall of the, you know, the greatest kingdom, okay, uh, to ever exist in the history of mankind. And um, the irony to it, you know, and I, don't, I really don't like to use irony <laughs> or ir ironic because everything is spiritual. But, you know, for lack of better words, okay, what's uh, peculiar about it, I'll say that, you know, is um, the fact that, you know, all of these things are happening, this economy is collapsing, you know, well, it's being orchestrated, okay, by um, the one percenters, okay, the elites, the banker families, you know, those that rule the world. Um, and... You know, they're, 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 they're the puppet master, okay? Well, ultimately, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, <clears throat> is the puppet master, okay? But, you know, on a carnal sense, uh, on the left-hand side, the Heavenly Father has poured the Spirit on, out on them, you know, basically to, <laughs> to kick themselves in their own ass, you see? Now, a lot of this, the, the economic distress and, you know, closures, foreclosures and, bankruptcies that you see going on with these different businesses uh, was, uh, was was systemically done, you know, on purpose, okay? And when you go back and, um, you know, do your homework on, on the C19, C19, Demic, yeah, when you do your homework on it, you know, you peel back the layers, you find out that, you know, that was merely, merely a smokescreen, okay, to ultimately collapse the American economy and the American dollar, you see, and to uh, force, okay, all of these small businesses to shut down and basically depend on a few businesses that are connected with the elites, okay? Prime example, Amazon, you know? Um, you have, I'm not, you know, not saying that Costco is connected, you know, uh, with them, but obviously they are in one form or fashion, okay? Well, they're, they're moving to a market where they only want to deal with big, box companies okay so all these you know small entities and you know uh franchisers and uh, franchises and franchisees well the gigs up for these people okay and you know the average joe schmo american who doesn't know anything okay whether it be uh negro latino native american west indian haitian uh, uh so-called white uh you know so-called chinese japanese what have you Okay, well, they believe, you know, oh, blessed America, you know, and it is, it is, it's going down the drain, okay? But the elites of this society are, have formulated, you know, way before, you know, years ago, okay, um, formulated a new plan, okay, uh, uh, NWO, you see? And uh, a part of them establishing that is to cripple this economy, okay, and one of the main ways they've crippled this economy, okay, is uh, by creating or self-inflicting um, um, inflation, 
Okay. And um, that's one of the things that stemmed from the C19er demic. You see, because when you when you when you sit back and look at it, you know, um, when you sit back and look at it, you saw that a lot of you know the the, the world pretty much shut down. Okay, they they were you know basic essential uh, stores that were open. And, uh, you know, the other ones that, you know, that weren't essential that, you know, slipped through the cracks. OK, pe people weren't, you know, <laughs> people were scared to go out, you know. And, and then eventually, you know, uh, you know, some of that, you know, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not necessarily curfews, but some of the restrictions were lifted, you know, and people started moving about, their, you know, their way. But when you're a business that doesn't you know, stockpile surplus, okay, like most business, like, for example, a car company or a car uh, manufacturer, you know, they they don't have a thousand extra parts, okay, they have what they typically would sell every year, they do a survey, not, not necessarily a survey, but they do, a, what's the word, um, inventory, you know, they do inventory, and then they look at st statistically what, what, what sells this time of year, and then they, you know, pretty much guesstimate or not really guesstimate, you know, uh, just going off of, you know, uh, what the what the data shows have enough parts, you know, to manufacture uh, uh, the amount of cars that they typically manufacture. OK, well, when you shut the world down uh, hmm, six months, uh, you know, or cripple your business. But, you know, as long as they did, um there's a trickle down effect. Okay. And all of that was schematically done. You see, and a lot of these businesses have not and will not rebound, uh, rebound from it. Okay. And that's one of the main reasons that Demick, you know, was pushed on the world. You see why? Because like I said, the elites, they want a new system. Okay. And you know, uh, C.L. Schwab, you know who I'm talking about at the WEF, basically said, "Look, man, okay, this this new system, man, you you're gonna you're not you you you're gonna own nothing and be happy, <laughs> you see, because what they want to do is strip away all the, you know, uh, so-called freedoms and liberties that the people have here in America, and um, you know." Just come with a new system of life because, uh, you know, the, the scriptures speak of him as a covetous man. He's extremely covetous. OK, he wants everything. He's not he's not satiated or satisfied with anything. OK, nothing is enough for this devil. OK. And he feels like people have too much. I, I keep air quoting uh, uh, freedoms, you know. And ultimately, what it's going to manifest into is him putting that micro C hip in everybody, you know, and controlling you from the inside out. OK. And and basically uh, uh, him, you know, in his sick, sadistic mind, wanting to be the most high. OK, well, we all know how the story go ends. <laughs> OK, according to the old scripture, it's not going to happen. The most high is going to foil your plans. OK, the scriptures talk about right before he is about to fill his belly. OK. Uh, the Most High is going to uh, uh, disappoint him, you know, roughly paraphrasing. OK, but nonetheless, these are things that he's schematically done to cripple this economy and, and basically cripple all the, you know, these small entity businesses. You know, those that are not big box, you know, like, you know, like your foot lockers and, you know, things of that sort, you know. But uh, for those of us who believe in Yahweh Bashim Shai, we champion it. Yay. <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, I, I got a, uh, a few videos off, uh, uh, you know, TikTok and, you know, just another reason why, you know, they want to shut it down because it's very, very informative. If if you set your algorithm up right, you know, you can learn a lot, you know, of TikTok. Are there a lot of bones? Of course, there are bones in everything that's not uh, uh, the Holy Scriptures. OK, in the, in, in the true, uh, sincere understanding of it. OK. But uh, hey, the Wadi Haba Shimia was shot for the eye salve and the discernment to be able to sort through these things and, um, you know, make sense of it and connect them to the scriptures, you know, to, to basically, 
you know, um, increase our, our hope and our faith, you know. So no further ado, no for my rim. And let's uh, let's click on this and see what stores are closing in 2024. <laughs> Don't mind me. Here we go. Bear with me. Stores that are closing in 2024. Closing all 540 remaining stores after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Family Dollar is closing 600 stores in the first half of the year. Party City is closing all 45 of their remaining stores. CVS is closing 900 stores by the end of the year. Foot Locker is closing a total of 400 stores in underperforming mall locations. Closing all 360 remaining stores after filing for bankruptcy. Christmas Tree Shops is closing all 73 of its remaining stores. Rite Aid has already closed 231 locations this year. Best Buy are closing 15 of their locations. Closing all stores as part of a shift to online retail. Closing all 371 locations makes sense considering the economy. Express closes 95 of its stores as part of its bankruptcy. Re and, and look, when you look at it, man, you know, a lot of these, these businesses that they're naming, you know, when you look back, you know, and, you know, uh, hindsight is always uh, 2020, but when you look back, you know, especially, you know, when we were in the world, um, you know, you, 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 you know, it never entered into your mind, especially place, a uh, place like Best Buy or, okay, uh, not necessarily Rite Aid because, uh, Rite Aid is through, it's absolutely through here in Miami. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, CVS, you know, these, these places, you know, you know, they, they, it's a pharmacy, you know, and this is a sick, sick, excuse me, a sick, sick world, you know. So this is thing that people need, but they're closing down. OK, uh, that Route 21 and, uh, you know, <laughs> Christmas tree store. I, I never understood that. Why, why, why the hell would you open up a store called the Christmas tree store and, you know, People only really use Christmas trees for, you know, maybe two to three weeks out of the year. But hey, that's Babylon for you, man. You know, even when I was young, man, we they, we we had one down here, and we we'll ride by there. And I'm like, this makes no sense, you know. So you know, especially now in its truth, you know, and rightfully so. Okay, <laughs> you should call it Rod Store, the the Rod Store. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me, but um, yeah, man. You know, like this, this is, this is like, I won't even say mind blowing because the scriptures prophesied that these things would happen, but it's, it's like, it's, a, it's eye opening and breathtaking. And it also shows you, you know, the divinity and, the, you know, just the faithfulness of the Holy Scriptures. Okay. It is happening, man. Structuring. Walgreens is closing 150 stores by August. H&M is planning to close 240 stores globally, closing 50 stores in 2024, and potentially more if they don't find a buyer. The discount retailer has closed all of its nearly 200 stores following its bankruptcy filing. Stores that are closing... Snacks the stores that are closing in 2024 part 2. 7-Eleven is planning to close 150 locations due to economic pressures. Those are closing 50 right. and, and one of and, their uh, locations due to so like, yeah, I did I did a video a little while back, you know, uh going into uh you know, a lot you know a lot of these businesses closing. And um, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, 7-Elevens and I don't know, you know, about where 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 everybody else is, but here in Miami, man, it is, it, it is, it's, it's crazy how many 7-Elevens are in such a close vicinity to the point where, you know, I'm, that's what prompted me to do that lesson, you know, because I'm like, man, why the hell would you have, like, literally, okay, uh, from, let's say, you know, 7th Avenue, which is, you know, here in Miami, is um, pretty much turns into US one. No, 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 uh, uh, four forty one. You know, uh, uh, Interstate four forty one. 
okay? And you pretty much can ride that all the way to New York, you know, but through the streets. But, you know, it turns into highway at certain points. But, you know, anyway, um, within a, a radius of, I want to say, let's just say from 95th Street to about... 125th Street, you got the, a total of maybe four or five 7-Elevens in that small radius on that same avenue, okay? And, you know, it, it baffled me. I'm like, why the hell does so many 7-Elevens keep popping up? And then I found out that you can be a franchisee. You know, if you, you got the shekels, okay, a uh, bank will give you the loan, which, you know, in, 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 in a lot of cases, if your credit ain't piss poor, um... They'll grant you that money. Why? Because they understand that, you know, you, you're coming with a, 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 a schematic plan, you know, meaning uh, 7-Eleven ha already has a blueprint on how they run things. And, you know, you just can't open up a 7-Eleven and do it how you want to do it. You know, there's stipulations that you have to go by, mandations and things of that nature. OK, so as a, a bank lender, you know, and, and seeing that you're proposing to, you know, you want to open up a 7-Eleven. They'll give you that business, that business loan. OK, why? Because you have a structured plan via 7 Eleven's, you know, um, policies and, and, you know, the way that they run, you know. Um, so that's why a lot of those 7 Elevens are popping up. OK, but as we're seeing here, he's saying a lot of them are closing. There are a few that have closed here in Miami. And um, what's happening, you know, because, you know, he mentioned he made mention, he said economic struggles. But what's really happening is that a lot, the, the, you know, a lot of the franchisees it, are finding it hard to get people to work, you know, that uh, I believe, yeah, that, that graveyard shift, you know, that overnight shift. Because, you know, when you go into 7-Eleven, man, this is like you, you got to be <laughs> you got to be in need of money in, the, in, a, in a harsh way to, to, to be a clerk there. Because, you know, there's no glass there. There's no protection. Like, and, and it's open, what, 24, you know? So a lot of the, you know, workers don't want to work those, those, those hours. So a lot of the franchisees want to shut down early. But 7-Eleven as a brand doesn't want to do that. They don't want to allow them to, to close down, you know, or, or shut down at an early earlier time and i i perceive going back to edomite pride you know nope our our uh, uh our logo or our company policy is we're gonna stay open 24 hours and that's that you know so they're going there's a battle going on with the franchise and the franchisees to change these stipulation actually i believe there was a court case i'm not sure if it still going on or it happened already okay but uh, yeah, just wanted to give you a little insight on that about 7-Eleven. But uh, let's keep reading. I mean, keep keep watching. Let me scroll back a little bit. Part two. 7-Eleven is planning to close 150 locations due to economic pressures. Those are closing 51 of their locations due to underperformance. Radio Shack is closing over 1,000 locations, leaving only about 400 left. Sam's Club is closing 63 locations by the end of the year. Target is closing nine locations across the U.S. due to theft. Gap is closing 350 of its 400 locations by the end of the year. Macy's plans to close 50 stores by the end of the year and 150 more by 2026. Forever 20 one plans to close 111 locations. Toys R Us is closing 200 locations in 2024. Sears are closing 20 more locations, leaving only 11 left. JC Penney's is closing 154 locations by the end of 2024. GNC is closing 900 of their 2,200 locations. Claire's is closing 130 locations in 2024. Pac Sun is closing 100 locations, leaving only 225 left. So sad seeing all our childhood stores disappear. Stores that are closed. <laughs> he said, "So sad seeing all our, you know, all our childhood uh, stores disappear." Well, we speak to the contrary. It is a beautiful thing. We celebrate it. You know, we actually toast to it. Okay, because hey, ba Babylon is going down the drain, and rightfully so, man. 
Okay, but like I said, it's being orchestrated by the elites. But what they don't know is, you know, them doing this, okay, uh, it's going to end up, end up biting them in the ass, okay? Why? Because, you know, they're cutting off a lot of merchants, okay? A lot of those stores that we named, especially, let's say, a Best Buy, it's safe to say <laughs> about 97, 98% of that stuff in there comes from where? China or other countries. Okay, especially with the Forever 21s, the Rude Rudis, and uh, even with the, 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 the uh, pharmaceuticals. Okay, the majority of those items or goods are not manufactured here in America. Okay, so a lot of, uh, uh, you know, these merchants, you know, that, that, that flood uh, Babylon, uh, a.k.a. America, you know, with goods, okay, they're gonna they're gonna get hit below the belt, man. You see, and now we see what uh, culminating what we read in the scriptures that the nations were mad, okay, and that's why I say it's gonna end up biting in their ass because it's gonna and obviously war is in their heart. They want to go to war, you see, and it is going to happen because it's prophesied in the scriptures, okay. But it's not going to go as they plan. Why? Because Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's going to show up and show out, okay? So, yeah, man, Babylon is through, man, okay? And Because this is a consuming nation. And and, and, and what do they call it? Uh, uh, people here in America, oh, let's go do some retail therapy, okay? Well, hey, <laughs> thanks to Jeff Bezos, <laughs> okay? Oh, uh, yeah, your retail therapy is about a wrap. It's about over, man, okay? Because all of these stores are closing, okay? These, these are... Like Macy's? You kidding me? Growing up, going to Macy's and all those, good, you know, like, you know, it wasn't a rich, a richy rich store, but you know, you had to have a couple shekels to buy stuff out of Macy's, you know. Now it's through, okay. And what does it stem from? The the C one nine pandemic, okay. When things shut down, and then look how clever this devil is, man. Um, in in, in wickedness, that is. He's clever in wickedness, you see. Uh, so clever that his wickedness is gonna get him eradicated from the earth, <laughs> man. But anyway, the Lord Cole. But anyway, uh, you know what happened? You know they shut these places down. Then all of a sudden, hey, Stimmies, you know, and you who are the biggest consumers in America? You Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, so called. Okay who are the biblical Israelites. You're the biggest consumers, okay? So so DJ Trump throwing around all, all that money and Jake getting the, 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 the PPPs and doing this and doing that and buying this and buying that. Hey, well, the, sent the, the, the economy into absolute inflation, okay? So what happens in inflation? The prices go up, Okay? Stimmies, those stimmies run out, you know, and that's what caused it, you know, pumping all that money into the system, okay, but then all of us, the stimmies run out, you know, and the prices of the goods go up, but we're back to regular now, and wages are lower, you see, the dollar is being devalued. So you get what you have, inflation, and stores have to raise their prices, but people can't afford their prices. So guess what? Bankruptcy or going out of business. You see, this this devil's clever, man. He's clever, you know. When it comes to wickedness, I must I must say. But let's uh let me see. Let's do this real quick. Let's do this. And bear with me. And flee him. Oh. Bear with me. Get my reader, man. Inflation. And 
forgive me if you're like, hey, typing so slow. Yeah, you know, with my vision, you know. You know, still give me the ability to do, go ahead and do shows. It's just, you know, I got to move at a different pace. But anyway, uh, let's see. Let me put this. What the hell going on here? Oh, like here. Okay. It says inflation. Inflation is the rate of increases in prices over over a given period of time. Inflation is typically a broad measure. Uh, say, yeah, a broad measure measure such as the overall increase in prices or the increases in the cost of living in a country. And all of these things have taken place. Okay, and we're rapidly approaching a hyper, super and hyperinflation, man. Okay, to the point where the pretty much by the end of the year, they're speculating that, you know, the car, the, the car market, okay, is, is you know, is going to crash. Okay, because why? Oh, and, you know, what I was mentioning about that, you know, the production line, Hey, when you shut the world down, um, you know, obviously they're not selling like they would typically sell. So now they're housing a bunch of product that is not being sold, which they're dead set against. You see? But then all of a sudden, you know, stimmies roll around and, you know, uh, prices are at a reasonable status and people are able to buy cars, you know, you know, once things started to open up and, you know, the, the, the demand superseded the amount of product that they had. Okay. So people will put on, you know, on hold and, you know, now they're rushing to get the product in to meet the demand, you know? So yeah, it just threw the whole system in the shock, man. And that's why this, this place is at the status that it is. Okay, so uh, let's get a few precepts just to edify. So this is uh, Micah chapter 2, verse 1. It says, woe to the oppressors at the header, right? So it says, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Okay, and who is that speaking about? Hey, the one percenters, the elites of this world, the people that rule the world. Okay, the, the elite banker families. Okay, if you, if you haven't heard, look them up. It's worth the Google. Okay. Let's see what it says in the NLT. So it says, Michael chapter two, verse one, it says judgment against wealthy oppressors. <laughs> oh man, the NLT be going hamburger. Shout out my brother, Itazawan uh, Reese, shout out. Shout out, brother. But anyway, it says uh, judgment against wealthy oppressors. Verse one, it says, what sorrow awaits you who lie awake at night thinking up evil plans? <laughs> Woo! Let's go, NLT. Really, let's go, Yahweh Bashim Shai. okay? Because he's put the spirit on these people to translate what we read in the Old Testament. And a lot of times is 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 more understandable. Okay, so people ain't got no excuses. And really, that's why it's, it's the case. So nobody has a, a goddamn excuse, okay, why they remained ignorant, okay, or in the congregation of the dead, right? So it says, oh, I can't understand old English. Well, here it is, you know, <laughs> New Living Testament, right? Or New Living Translation, I believe. So uh, verse one, it says, what sorrow, 
What sorrow awaits you who lie awake at night thinking of evil plans? Right. And that's what that that, that, that c 19 er Demet was all about, man. OK, that was a wicked plan to do what? Basically crippled his economy to ultimately bring in what? CBDCs. OK, they, they create the problem. Then they come with the solution or the ab KO. Right. So it says, uh. You rise, you rise at dawn and hurry to carry them out simply because you have the power to do so. You see? And that's his mindset, you know? It, 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 whoa, whoa. Like Pinky and the Brain, what we do today, Brain? We're going to take over the world, Pinky. <laughs> yeah, that's this devil, man. That's what that was mimicking, man. The elites, they put a lot of subliminals in these cartoons, man. You know, and it goes right over people's head. Well, it went over our heads, but we were kids, man. Okay? We were kids, you know? But now, hindsight being 2020, makes all the sense in the world, right? Verse 2, it says, When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want uh, someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his you cheat a man of his property stealing his family's inheritance okay and that's exactly what this devil has done man but man this new living uh, uh, translation is spot on man but now let's go back to the KJ Vizzle where are we okay it's a lock oh, back to NLT KJV. So, uh, Micah chapter 2, verse 1 in the KJV, or King James Version, it says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Right. You know, why do they do it? Because they can. They have no opposition, that, at least what, from what they perceive. You know, who's going to come against us? Who's who's going to stop the elite? Hey, we own the world. Between those those 13 bank accounts, we own everything. Like, who's going who gonna to come against us? Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai. Okay? That's who's going to come against you. And that's who's going to defeat you and take you out of power. The same entity that gave you your power. Idiot. Verse 2, it says, And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house even a man and his and his heritage okay and that's exactly what they've done especially okay to the nation of israel okay you negroes latinos native americans west indians and haitians okay that is a track worker track worker and they that beat of, of the speckled bird those that look like the other nations okay but their lineage goes back to Israel. They they, they getting crushed and uh, you know coveted, uh, you know whatever, whatever land they've been scattered to. Okay, this is that's this guy's mo, man. You know, but the point is they devised that. You know that whole. You know I don't want to keep saying it. You know flag the video, but you know what I'm talking about the demic. You know what I'm saying. They, 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 you know, strategically put that together, you know, and, and came because they know Americans, are, you know, are the most simplest, uh, dumbest, scariest people on the planet. OK. And they knew, hey, we, we, we show videos, of, uh, you know, over in Wuhan, you know, people just collapsing. Then, you know, telling, oh, it's coming here. They go, oh, my God, you know. And it worked. It worked. And then you people start taking the, the juice, the jump juice. You know what I'm saying? Not even knowing what's in it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, madre. <laughs> but uh, let's go to uh, the book of Psalms. Because that, hey, you, you got to take your hat off to him now. Okay? You got to take your hat off to him. He, he came one angle. To, to to cause uh corruption in another man. 
He came with a with a with a dis ease to cripple the economy. Mm -mm -mm. Perfect devil. You are, yes, you are, you devil, you. <laughs> Psalm chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, is it 10? Let me see, let me see. Yep, yep, Psalm 10, 1. It says, why standest thou? Let's see, it says a prayer for the uh, overthrow of the wicked. Okay, the wicked. Right, and you see... Um. That capital W, man. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, you know, I, no, it's a capital P. So it really, but no, it's so, uh, uh, there are times in the Bible where there's uh, is is when you see the wicked, there's a capital W. Okay, showing you that wicked is prominent, and that's speaking about Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. When you see the Bible say the wicked, okay, because when you look at it, who's been more wicked than Esau? Okay, well. I take that back. The scriptures say that uh, that you you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian Haitians, okay, you Israelites, your deeds have overseeded the wicked. Okay, and when you look at it, yeah, Jake taught uh, Israel. The, the Israelites taught everybody how to be wicked, man. Okay, like the apostle was just going into how you know that that that. Uh, that whole naked Greek vibration, D D Jake started that, man. Okay, long hair Jake. That's Jake, man. Men, I mean men wearing long hair. That's Jake. You know, that's why Paul was cursing them out in Corinthians, man. Okay, they had adopted that that Greek Roman, that Greco Roman, uh, 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 you know, uh, mentality and philosophy and, and culture. You know, and he basically had to, you know, uh, uh, spiritually. You know, remove, you know, uh, wash them and cleanse them, man, which he did. You know, that's why he was considered the apostle to the Gentiles. You see, and the Gentiles were Israelite foreigners, okay, who got dispersed and, you know, over three or four generations actually believed that they were Greeks or that they were Romans, okay? That's why they said there's no difference between the Greek and Jew because the Greek was a Jew, but he wasn't acknowledging himself as a Jew. He was calling himself Greek, just like us over here in America, uh, you know, being Israelites by birth and by heritage, but calling ourselves African-American or Haitian. Same thing, man. OK, but if the Lord don't want you to see it, you ain't going to see it. So uh, Psalm 10 and 1 says, why stands thou far off? O Yahweh by Shem Shai. Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Verse 2. The wicked, you see, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Okay? So, with this whole pandemic, man, and what it caused as far as the economy goes, look who's, who's suffering the most from it, man. Jake, Jake is in straits, man. Jake is in straits. There, there, there are a lot of brothers that are catching it. You know, but hey, why do you have a shout for the brotherhood? You know, hey, we, we, we pick each other up, you know, but as a whole, Jake, Jake is catching it, man. Like here in Miami, it is absolutely fucking ridiculous. OK, the price of living opposed to the wages is is it's out of this world. And they're turning this. They're trying to turn this into the new uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, tech hub, you know, or, or the new New York. OK, they got they got uh, a new Wall Street. They got a. Not necessarily Wall Street, but, you know, as far as the economic hub, you know, in, in, in Babylon, you know, they got that one, that big bull, okay, that they have in New York. They got one down here in Miami, man, okay? They're building 15 many cities all over the place, building new highways. You know, as crowded as Miami is, you're building new highways? Get out of here. Not widening them. You're making new ones, you know, and a lot of these you know, business uh, uh, gurus from different places are moving here. Man, this place is a mess. It's decrepit, you know, and you just feel the wickedness. It's like, you know, I've been here all my life and, I, you know, being in the spirit and being spiritual, okay? But I always could feel vibrations, you know, growing up. But, you know, more so now in the truth because I know, you know, where, you know, it's either a righteous entity or a wicked entity. And the energies slock you. 
And that's what you feel, just straight wicked energy, man. Okay, because a lot of people are moving down here and, and buying up everything, you know, buying up everything. And guess who's suffering? Jake. Jake is being pushed the hell out of Miami, straight up, man. In, in three or four years, if you don't make at least $150,000 a year in Miami, you can't live here. And that's what they're doing strategically, working evil upon their beds like we just read, right? It says, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You see? <laughs> so that plan you got, this shit is not going to work, man. It's not going to work. It's, it's working how you want it right now. But your, your goal is to have everybody see hipped have everybody chipped up, like, uh, who was that, John or Jay Rockefeller said? Uh, I believe it was to uh, man, it's, it's to Aaron Russo. It's one of the Rockefellers, you know? And, you know, he said that was the goal. We're going to get everybody chipped, you know? And, uh, you know, <clears throat> and that's his ultimate goal, you know? But right, and he, hey, hey people are going to get it. They're going to have it under their skin. In their right hand, right hand, or in their forehead, or in their left hand, or wherever this devil want to put it. Okay? For you scoffers out there, oh, see, they got one in their left hand. So, uh, simple things I tell you. But, um, yeah, you know, all this, uh, who, who stands to lose the most at what this devil doing? You Israelites. And the reality about the whole matter is, the Most High is doing this, obviously. He does all things. He's doing this to destroy, you know, first and foremost. Well, I can't say first and foremost because the scriptures say judgment going to be again at the house of Israel. Okay? But also, not, not even but, also is to destroy the wicked. You see? Um, verse three, it says, for the wicked boast of his heart's desire and, and blesseth the covetous, right? You see, blessed the covetous. If you're covetous in, in, in America, man, you, you stand to make a lot of money, whatever, whatever field it is, whether it's legit or illegal, you stand to make a lot of money. Okay. Why? Because this place is set up for the covetous, right? It says, whom the Lord abhorreth. Verse 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after the most high. The most high is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Okay, and that's another thing that this is doing. You know, shutting down all these businesses. So these merchants are going to take hit. Because they're not going to be manufacturing these goods because at the rate that they were because these stores are going out of business. Okay? So it's a trickle-down effect. Okay? And that's him puffing at all of his enemies. You see? Man, the scriptures are spot on, baby. Mm -mm -mm. This is... Uh, Zapanya. Yeah. The book of Zephaniah, chapter one. Uh, let me see what I want to start. Where I want to start. I know what I want. Mm hmm. Let's get straight to the to the point. So this is uh, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 10. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day, say of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, that there shall be the noise, there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling uh, from the second, 
and great crashing from the hills. OK, now this is going into uh, commerce and ultimately the stock market, you know, crashing from the hills that they, they crash that is imminent. OK, it's imminent. Why? Because it's prophesied in the scriptures. Right. Verse 11, it says, how ye inhabitants of Mactesh. OK, and Mactesh was a merchant city, you know, cognizant or similar to America or Babylon, the great. OK, and had a lot of merchants there and just like here. OK, they not may not be physically in it. And a lot of them are physically here. OK, who runs a lot of all, most of the boat? Well, I won't say bodegas because, you know, there's northern tribe, but, you know, um, or Hispanics. But, you know, a lot of these corner stores, you know, these convenience stores. OK. It's these heathens, man. It's the, 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 these, uh, uh, you know, Ishmaelites, okay, Arabs, okay, or, or gooks, you know, Chinese, Japanese, um, you know, uh, Hamite Africans, you know, just flooding Jake's neighborhoods, man, and, and taking over. So the, the, the merchants are physically here as well, okay? Also abroad, those that, uh, you know, that do trade and, um, you know, send goods over here, like Mexico, uh, 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 Taiwan, China, okay? They go without mentioning China. You understand me? <clears throat> so, yeah, the scripture saying, How ye inhabitants of Mactesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. You see? All the merchant people are cut down. Why? Because... The elites are collapsing this economy. You see? And really, Yahweh Vashim Yahweh is collapsing this economy. See, the elites, they're going to be, they're still going to live lofty. Okay? But the average Joe Schmo American, he's, he's going to be in straits, baby. And they can't deal with adversity at all. They're going to, oh my gosh, Kevin. <laughs> you know? Put the pistol in their mouth and pull the trigger. They're not built to deal with adversity, okay? Because they've been given a false sense of heaven, a little, their little slice of heaven, okay? <laughs> and that's all it's been, a little slice, because this is their heaven, right? But it's, it's, it's becoming their hell, right? It says, all they that bear silver are cut off, verse 13, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will, strip, uh, I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees. Okay, and when you go into that word lees, right? It says, oh, so like, let me keep reading. Verse 12, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candlesticks, right? And the Lord is doing that now. And what is that candlestick? This word, the light, the truth, okay? So he's searching Jerusalem with candlesticks to do what? To basically define the desirables and the undesirables, okay? Really, more, more, more specifically, the elect, okay? Sort out the elect from the degenerates and the reprobates, okay? <clears throat> that proverbial line is being drawn in the sand. The word is out. That's the discerner, okay? That's gonna, <clears throat> that's gonna discern your thoughts. Like we reading, what's that, Hebrews, the fourth chapter? <clears throat> the word of Yahweh by Shemal Shah is a strong tower. I mean, it's like a roll. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Salakia. It says the um the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the sun to, to the marrow, and is and is a discerner of the thoughts. Okay? That word come out, we're gonna see it's, it's gonna de determine what you about. Okay? And that's why they say what? Uh, they hated him that rebuketh in the gate, and him, him that speaketh uprightly. And abhor him that speak of uprightly. Why? Because that, that word come out and it's gonna it's gonna do a gut check. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like the uh, beloved brother Samak say, body shots, body blow, you know? It's gonna do all that. And it, it, two things are gonna happen. One or two things are gonna happen. You're gonna adhere, okay, and it's gonna resonate with you, or you're gonna buck up at it. And that's what I've seen, you know, my short stay. You know, my few years in the, and it's truth, man. It that that word gonna discern you, okay? So that's that candlestick, right? And it says, and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, Yahweh Shimei Shai will not do good, neither will he do evil. 
okay? And, and being settled on your leaves, meaning what? When you go into that word leaves, it goes into basically the, the dregs, you know? The dregs, like you drinking a beer or a bottle of water and that last little bit in there, you know, eh, that, that's, that's majority, majority of that is probably spit, you know? Or sediments from whatever chemicals in this, you know? You just throw that shit away, okay? But here it is, Jake is 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 is, is settled on that. They're content, you know. Are they okay with with eating the crumbs that fall off a of master's table? Well, the Lord said, if that's the case, then He's gonna destroy you. If you're not hasting the kingdom wherein wherein dwelleth, or, or thirsting for a kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness, then you're gonna be written out of the story, man. Okay, especially if you're an Israelite. Main only if you're an Israelite. Okay, because the heathens ain't got a shot. He ain't got a shot in hell, baby. But yeah, and they say that the Lord will do nothing, will do good nor evil, okay? And that's our people, man. That's how you know that we, we are the Israelites. Our people, like, most high ain't going to do nothing. Because he's been saying he'll come back, and then he, and that's what that's inciting, that the Lord won't do good or evil. Meaning, ultimately, you don't believe he exists, okay? But, hey, his name itself means <laughs> he exists. Literally, he is, or he to be. Okay, and he to be known and to be respected. You better believe it. Let's uh, let's get one more. Uh, yeah, let's get one more. This is the book of Isaiah. <laughs> book of Isaiah. A message to Egypt. Okay, and as you, uh, we know, or if you don't know, uh, Egypt is another name, a code name for America. Okay, because there are a lot of similarities. Okay, um, <clears throat> northern, the northern kingdom, and the southern kingdom. Okay, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were in captivity. Okay, together. Um, in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, well, guess what? They're in captivity together in modern day Egypt. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of similarities. Okay. And, and a lot of times when you read the, the scriptures, you know, uh, it'll refer to this place as, as Egypt. Okay. Which is the scriptures say what? The, the place that is spiritually known as Sodom in Egypt. What does Sodom represent? You know, Momo. And, and Egypt represents what? Bondage, slavery. You see? But verse 1, it says, no Salakia. We want 14, I believe. We'll get straight to the point for the second time. Salakia didn't want to make this too long, but the spirit hit. You know how that go. Lord willing, this was edifying, though. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 19. Yep. Isaiah 19 and 14. It says, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have, have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. Right. And you know, this is the capital of perverseness, man. America, Babylon, the great is prominent. The world knows, right? It says, How about Shemal Shah have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof? And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. As a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Okay. And that's the case here in America, man. You know, just all type of, all manner of wickedness. You know. E every Everything about this place is decrepit. You know. Verse 15. It says, Neither shall there be any work for Egypt. <laughs> You see, now does that mean like nobody gonna have a job? It's just no work, period. No, 
Okay, why? Because the scriptures tell us that, uh, you know, as in the days of Noah, you know, I think that's in what, Second Peter's. Yep, as in the days of Second Peter's 3, I, I believe. Um, as in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking until the day that uh, Noah entered into the ark. Okay, and then what was it referring to? The, the times that are coming. The times that ain't even happened. You know, the, 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 the time in the scriptures, the prophecy that hasn't happened yet. Okay, the day of destruction, the second death. That ain't happened yet, but that's what uh, uh, Second Peter was, uh, uh, Salakia, Peter, Second Peter, uh, Peter was was quoting. Okay, it, not necessarily quoting, but the account that took place, you know, uh, during the flood. So he's saying, look, just like people were eating and drinking back then, and, and marrying and giving in wine. Okay, they're gonna be doing the same thing now when when the Lord uh, sends the Heavenly Father sends His Son back. Our Lord Yahweh Shai with the High Holy Host, you know, in, in the thermonuclear holocaust, okay, people are going to be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in the wine. The scriptures also speak about, uh, you know, there shall be two in the field grinding at the mill. Grinding means working, okay? So it doesn't mean no work at all, but, you know, to a certain extent. And we're seeing, we saw the video, all those Stores closing, man. This is this is, this is monumental. <laughs> Verse fifteen. It says, "Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, uh, which the head or tail branch." It said, "Let me read that again." Verse fifteen. It says, "Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail uh, branch." Or rust, or rush, salaki, or rush may do. You see, and we're seeing that. And, and guess who? A lot of those workers at these at these retail, uh, uh, you know, stores. Who are the workers? You Negroes, Latinos, Native American, West Indians, Haitians. Okay, you Israelites. Hey, it's high time to wake out of slumber. This this thing is crumbling around you. The walls are caving in. Okay, it's time to turn back to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, Bahashem Rachakwadash. Okay, so I, I believe I hit the point of Lord willingness was that a fine. With that I say Kwam Yashirala Shalawan.